Welcome to Sports News. The Cowboys of Lagos have emerged winners of this year's Independence Rugby Sevens Tournament. After losing the 2013 edition to Police Machine, the team led by coach Dele Coco bounced back to beat Barrero of Kano 27-14 in the final game at the Unicorn Stadium. Cowboys also avenged last year's defeat to Police Machine with a win in the semis. The police team found consolation in winning the third place match. The ladies were not left out. In the exhibition game, South South defeated Southwest 14 to 5, while Gosar beat Abia 17 to 12 to win the bowl final. The organizers believe the event can aid in developing the sport in Nigeria. If anything, I think it has offered us the opportunity to show what the homegrown talent can do. We are going to do it very differently, as you asked, because we wanted a much bigger international standard competition, one that would be held on by the IRB, which will ensure an even bigger tournament next year. As you can see, the players need something to aspire to. They need good prize money. They need a good tournament with a big crowd watching them. They need to show that they can do it on a big stage. And what the Independence Tournament does is it provides a big stage for them. Our dream is to take rugby to the greatest, the greatest heights. To, to, to see that uh, we measure our standard with the team in South Africa, in England, Australia, New Zealand. That is my greatest dream. On a rather sad and uh, sober note, thousands of South Africans today packed themselves into the Moses Mabida Stadium in Durban to bid farewell to slain Captain Senzo Mayua. The mood ranged between sad and festive, with supporters sobbing during the procession and then blowing the vizelas and singing chants later on. Mayua was shot and killed in what appears to be uh, what appears to have been a botched robbery in his girlfriend's house. One suspect has been arrested after witnesses picked him out in an identity parade. To the English Premier League now, Ayose Perez scored in 74 minutes as Newcastle continued their resurgence with a 1-0 win over Liverpool. Alessic Sanchez had needed a brace to lead Arsenal past Burnley 3-0. Oscar and Eden Hazard scored to help Chelsea maintain their unbeaten start to the season with a 2-1 win over Queen's Park Rangers. Everton and Swansea drew goalless while Kenyan Victor Munyama scored for Southampton in their 1-0 win over Hull City. And Esteban Cambiasa own goal gave West Brom a 1-0 win at Leicester. Nigeria's Victor Moses scored the game opener as Stoke City battled to a 2-2 draw against West Ham United at the Britannia. And now tennis, a defending champion Novak Djokovic is through to the final of the Paris Masters following a 6-2, 6-3 thrashing of Kei Nishikori. Less than two months after succumbing to the Japanese at the U.S. Open, the number one seed needed only 62 minutes to subdue his rival in straight sets. Djokovic will meet Milos Raonic in tomorrow's final after the Canadian overpowered Thomas Berdic 6-3, 3-6, 7-5 in the first semi-final. And in golf, Alexandro Levy continued his brilliant form in China today by powering to a four-shot lead at the BMW Masters. The Frenchman followed opening rounds of 65 and 66 with a bogey-free round of 63, nine under par to charge into the lead in Shanghai. Having started the day a shot behind, the 24-year-old came out flying with three straight birdies to open up his third round. That's it on Sports News. It will be back for the rest of the news at 10.
And now we turn our attention to the following scene where the resignation of Mr. Blaise Campore as president of Burkina Faso has begun to cause controversy within the country's army over who will rule the country. While the army's chief, army chief general, Honore Traore, said he had taken over the presidential guard second in command, Colonel Isaac Zida, said he had assumed power as head of state. Speaking in a televised address today, Colonel Zida said General Traore's claim to be head of state was now obsolete. Mr. Campari announced his resignation yesterday after 27 years in power. It came a day after protesters were angry at his attempt to amend the Constitution and extend his 27-year-old hold on the presidency and they set fire to parliament and government buildings. However, the military announced a state of emergency and the dissolution of both houses of parliament on Thursday, effectively leaving a power vacuum. In a radio broadcast, Lieutenant Colonel Isaac Zida says he's taken over as head of state in Burkina Faso in an apparent rebellion against the military chief of staff, Omari Traore, who had earlier said he would lead a transition. Burkina Faso's longtime president, Blaise Compaori, had resigned on Friday amid mass protest against his efforts to extend and his 27-year rule. His resignation leaves two military factions vying for control of the West African country. The whereabouts of Traore is not immediately clear. He had announced that he would take over the presidency at a news conference shortly after Mr. Compaore's resignation, but has not appeared publicly since then. However, many of the tens of thousands of protesters who packed the streets of Ouagadougou on Friday had rejected Traore's announcement, saying that it was too close to outgoing President Compaore. Capitalizing on the frustration among protesters, a group of junior officers led by Zida, who commands a regiment of the President Guard, the Army's best trained and equipped force, quickly moved to challenge Traore's authority, announcing curfew measures and the closure of borders. Campari was a close military ally of the United States and former colonial power of France. The events will be closely worked by other governments across West and Central Africa, where a number of long-serving leaders are reaching the end of their constitutional terms. And outside Africa, violence is still going on in Iraq, where Islamic State uh, jihadists have killed at least 50 members of a western Iraqi tribe in Anbar province. Officials and tribal leaders say the deaths are thought to be in retaliation for the Arabu Nimr tribe's resistance to the jihadists. The news comes after mass graves were found containing between 80 and 220 bodies, many from the same tribe. ISIS militants have killed hundreds of people in the large areas of Iraq and neighboring Syria where they control. And the main news again, Gombe State Governor Ibrahim Dankwabo has visited the scene of yesterday's bomb explosion at a transport station in the state capital. He was also at the hospital to comfort those who were injured in the incident. The fight against human trafficking has yielded some results as security agents have arrested suspected baby factory operators in Anambra and Eno states. Yobe State Governor today got massive endorsement for re-election and was also presented with the nomination form for the 2015 poll by his supporters. That's it on the news at 10 tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I am the Lumi Day For all of us here, do have a good night.